Job 5 and 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Ba'ashim Rekach Wadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of the Great Millstone who teach us his truth according to the Bible and rule well. I know the one of the sincere arguments about the four corners of the earth pushing this truth through diligence and sincerity and in charity. And I know the one of the sincere followers, believers of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, not just hearers of the word, but doers as well. You men, women, and children are hopeful elect Shalom. All right. And we're going to read this Job 5 again, fifth chapter. But I want to read this title and this article on RT. It says, Pandemonium's loom looms for the world as the ever everything shortage meets a dark winter thanks to collapsing global supply chains. All right. Pan, let's get that definition. Let's get that definition real fast. Oh, snap. Let me hook up to the uh, Slovakia. My Wi-Fi wasn't on. All right. It's on now. All right. Pandemonium. P-A. And we're going to make this lesson quick. Lord's will. E-M. O-N. All right. A disorder, a wild and noisy disorder or confusion, uproar. So uproars, disorder looms for the world as the everything shortage meets a dark winter thanks to the collapsing global supply chains. It says a global supply chain crisis is brewing, leading to the full spectrum shortage of essential items. And um, this is very true because someone I know. Um, they like to do um, online shopping where they just they order order the, their food from the store and they go to like a um, to the store and they, they put the groceries or whatever they got into, into their car. Um, I think it's called drive pickup, something to that effect. And uh, the store was out of salt. Now, salt is a major uh, a major um, uh, uh, item all right, that we use on an everyday basis. It can be used for many, many things, all right? And salt was one of the things that the store was out of, all right? And these are essential items, as well as many other things. Water, all right? I was in the store last week, and I saw water jump up $2, all right? The regular case of water that I buy, it jumped up $2. Why? Because of the shortage. <coughs> it says this is the result of a mass centralization where the policies are uh, dictated and synchronized by the aristocrats of the new norm so they want this to become a new norm all right remember this devil esau you don't want everything to be out of control but matter of fact um let me go back to that precept because um you know the elect they're going to laugh all right matter of fact yeah, Job 5 and 19, he shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch them, right? Because in, in the time of the seven, we're supposed to be in those chariots, all right? Beholding the evil that's touching down here in America, those, uh, and those ICBM missiles touch down. It says, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death, all right? Because this is a famine, this is a shortage, all right? Uh, food, bread, water, resources, things of that nature. The Lord is going to deliver us from that. All right. It says, and in war from the power of the sword. All right. Let's see, jumping down. Verse 22, it says, at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. You see? So when this destruction comes, all right, Jacob's trouble, World War III. All right, and the famines that you're seeing now, all right, scriptures, I mean, not the scriptures, but the article says a dark winter, a shortage for the dark winter, all right. It says, at destruction, Job 5 and 22, at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, right? 
And what does that remind you of? It reminds you of what? Isaiah. Isaiah, what's that? Um, oh, man. Uh, at 13, it says, Therefore, thus said the Lord power, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. My behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Okay. Remember, the Lord's servants are going to be are going to be rejoicing in that day. All right. And if you haven't been serving the Lord, hey, look, man, you better hurry up and get up on it. All right, because this place is going down and the Lord's plaguing this place as we speak. So getting back to the article. It says the coming years will be marked as an, by extreme social economic turbulence. The world is reported a face reportedly facing an everything shortage where essential goods are getting harder, to, harder, farther and more times consuming to find. All right. So it's taking you um, um, harder to find these things such, such as saw, I saw a shortage of chicken. All right. I went into the store and they said, uh. You know, we're out of, we're out of uh, chicken. All right. It says, and look, and further. So what does that mean? You got to travel farther. All right. Which is what? More time consuming to find. All right. It says these shortages affects the entire gamut. What is that word? Gamut. Let's see here. G-A-M-U-T. All right. So now, gamut, the complete range or scope of something, the range, the spectrum, the area. All right. So these shortages affect the entire area of the social pyramid structure. The typical production to deliver cycle is repeatedly hammered by a Mac Macbury muscle, Macbury muscul musical chairs. A woes and tunes with Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And that's what's going to happen. That's what these elites want. Everything that can will go wrong. And it's going to lead to uprising of the people. People are rebelling against the government. As it tells you in Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. All right. All for the lack of food, bread, and water. People are going to be kicking each other's doors. All right. These are the times that we're coming in. But the elect, the hopeful elect, is what? Going to laugh at destruction and famine. Because we read Isaiah 65, we're going to be singing and rejoicing. Lord, when we some of those elect uh, men and women and children, all right, that's been serving the Lord. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted. Um, and there was also an article that talks about uh, the reasoning why these bottlenecks are happening at the docks is because they don't have enough people taking the Maxine waters. So they're going to blame the ones who haven't taken Maxine waters for what? For the reason why you have shortages. And can you imagine that out, out uh, uproar that's going to bring? All right. The divisions that's going to happen because of this. Man, hey man, we are living in those times. Um, did I finish off that Job 5? Let me go back and see. I could have read on down, but I just skipped around through it. Um, yeah, so let's um, let's grab two more and wrap it on up. Um, I kind of wanted to get a story on famine, but um, let's go to... Uh, Matter of fact, let's go to Jeremiah real fast. Because I wasn't get the story in Kings. All right. It was famine so, so harsh. And um, matter of fact, I might roll through it real quick. Just real quick. It's the second Kings chapter six. I'll start it. Um, try to get through this quick. Um, 
24, and it came to pass after this that Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up to went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it. All right, until and as matter of fact, let's get that word besieged for those that don't know. B E. Salakia. Besieged. All right. Surrounded by armed forces like they did in 70 AD. All right. Um, surrounded them. So when nothing was going in, nothing coming out, right? So the same thing is pretty much happening nowadays. There's no new thing up under the sun. There's nothing coming in. All right. These ships are at a standstill at the docks because they have no one to uh, pro uh, process these uh, uh, items coming off the ships because of lack of workers. So they say, all right, Second Kings 6, it says at 25, and there was a great famine in Samaria and behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver. All right, ass his head talking about a donkey. And four parts of a cab of dove, of dove's dung, for five pieces of silver. So they was pretty much selling um, a, 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 a worth, worth something that's worthless. All right, because the famine had gotten so bad. No one's eating the ass head. No one's eating a, a dove's dung. But that's how bad it got. All right. And remember Matthew 24 and 21, the time that's coming is not going to be like a time on the earth. All right. <clears throat> so read Noah says, as the king of Israel was passing upon, passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him saying, help my Lord, O king. And he said, if, if the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? That's right. The Lord, he said, the king said, if the Lord's not helping you, what can, what, what can I do? All right. We know that the Lord controls all things. It says, out of the barn floor or out of the wine press. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we bore my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. All right. And that's the times that we're coming in, man. Deadly serious times It says and it came to pass when the king Heard the words of the woman that he rent his Clothes and he passed By upon the wall and the People looked and behold He had sackcloth up, up with, Within upon his flesh So he was in a state of mourning man You know And the Lord is getting ready to bring the, the uh, Children of Israel to a, a, a All time lower state again Alright in these last days and you're starting to see it all right you're starting to see it man that's why it's very important to repent all right let's get a repent scripture uh one of my favorites sirach 17 um at 25 it says return unto the lord and forsake thy sins Make thy prayer before his face. Matter of fact, I saw 24. It says, Sirach 17 and 24, but unto them that repent, he granted them return and comfort those that fail in patience. So if you repent, the Lord's going to open, open his arms back up to you, man. Turn back. All right. This is an action when you're repenting, man. You're going to stop idol worshiping, worshiping other gods such as uh, JC, Jesus Christ. All right. Being uh, Muslims, being um, um, um Catholics, all right, eating the bumble foods, crab, shrimp, pork, all right, smoking weed, all right, celebrating these holidays, just to name a few. And this lesson got longer than what I wanted, but you know, I don't, I, we don't control none, it's the spirit. Verse 25 says, Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins, make thy prayer before his face and offend less. You see. Because you're going to want to eat in those days. You're gonna, going to want to be protected in these times of trouble. Turn again to the Most High. 
and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into light of health, and hate thou abomination vehemently, hate the, the abomination of the passion. All right. And you, uh, pork chop eating pastors, right? You, <laughs> what the um, the brothers from Bahamas say, Deacon Bacon and Reverend Ham. All right, you guys. Matter of fact, you got you know, look, they gonna pay. You got a lot of uh, Christian pastors, and even those that call themselves Israelites talk about there's not going to be any Jacob's trouble, there's not going to be any famine. All right? Let's start at Jeremiah 14. Uh, I'll start at um, 11. Then said the Lord unto me, it's talking to Jeremiah, pray not for this people for their good. Well, yeah, when their stomach start touching their back, and the ones of our people who forsook the Lord, don't pray for them, man. It says, verse 12, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they off offer burnt offerings and ob oblations, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by famine and by pestilence. What's pa famine is what we're coming into now. Then said I, ah, Lord, Yahweh. Behold, the prophet say unto them, ye shall not see the sword. All right. Neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assurance, uh, assured peace in this place. And that's what uh, a lot of these church pastors tell our people. It says, then the Lord said unto me, the prophets which prophesied lies in my name, I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them to spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught. And the deceit of their heart. That's right. That's why the scriptures tell us in uh, Jeremiah 17. All right. To what? The, the heart is um, um, desperately wicked. Matter of fact, let's get it real fast. And then we'll go back. It's Jeremiah 17 and uh, 17 and 9. The heart is desperately wicked above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's right. That's why we have the scriptures to uh, guide ourselves by, man. Because if not, you start leaning to your own understanding and breaking down the scriptures wrong. Right? Saying, look, hey, ain't no tough times coming. Ain't no famine coming. Right? The Lord said, those prophets that prophesied that, I did not send them. All right? So... Jeremiah 14 15 therefore therefore thus said the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesied my name and I sent them not yet they say swore and famine shall not be in this land by swore and famine shall those prophets be consumed you see so the ones of our people that say ain't no famine coming no destructions coming by the swore and by the famine that's how they're going to be perished that's how they're going to perish man all right, so don't take the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh lightly through his prophets, man. All right? You got to hold fast to this knowledge, to this truth. Because there's false prophets out there, man. Trying to scatter the flock. Let's grab two more. I think, you know, the point is made. Um... A famine is coming to repent. Mark 13 and 8. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And you see that going on. All right. You got North Korea and their uh, super soldiers. All right. Russia. All right. Re just ready to start uh, shooting their uh, missiles off that they done created. All right. Iran. All these countries that, 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 that uh, are, are, are upset with America. It says, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. Those are constantly going on. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrow. So once we see these, these are the beginning of sorrows, man. That's why we read in Sirach 17, uh, uh, repent and turn back to the Lord, man. Remember Isaiah 65, the servants shall eat. All right. So um, let's grab one last one. Um. Go to Psalms. Psalms 
at 18 says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. So the ones that fear the Lord are going to hope in him. Hope that what? The Lord has mercy. Remember the Lord told you in Matthew 10, he's come not to bring peace but a sword. And when the Lord's bringing that sword, at the same time, we want the Lord to remember mercy. All right. Verse 19, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. All right. And that's talking about the elect. The elect is going to laugh as we read in Job. All right. So it's just something to consider in these last days, man. The Lord's bringing the famine. If we're not serving him, you're not going to eat, man. But the ones that are serving him, don't worry about it. Continue to trust in the Lord and the Lord's going to feed us, man. All right. There's many, many accounts on that. All right. But Lord willing, that's what's edifying to next time I say Shalom.